So my name is Emma Holland. I am 23 years old and I'm from Canberra in the Australian Capital Territory. And I've been doing comedy for, I think probably two years now. Yeah, two years. <laughs> my first ever gig was the most nervous I've ever been in my life. I didn't eat that whole day. I had planned it a month beforehand. I'd looked up the gig, written my like five minutes and practiced it over and over again for like two weeks. Um, the day of, I went to the venue and even made sure there was an open mic there that night so I didn't just turn up. Um, and then the material went okay. I would never do it now, but it was all right. It went fine. Uh, I am a big history buff, I quite like history. I've been doing a lot of research right lately into the uh, gold rush what was happening in Bathurst in the 1800s. Uh, and I found it very interesting, the concept of inflation, the fact that something back then that was worth maybe $3 uh, could be worth hundreds now. So I did a bit of research into the type of things that were found during the gold rush when panning for gold. Um, and I've put them into like a chart of what they're worth now. And I think it will surprise you actually. Uh, so this first one, uh, this is just a gold flake. Yeah, and they're worth $43 each now, which is insane for something so small, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, next, we have a gold flake, which is worth $150, going up a bit. Yeah. Uh, next, we have, um, these are tickets to Golden Plains Music Festival, $399 with $8.50 purchasing. Uh, next, we have, these are Golden Girls Prayer Candles, $800 for the set or $200 each, but uh, no one's buying just one, are they? Next, we've got Jeff Goldblum worth $40 million. Uh, next, we have a uh, golden retriever, which is uh, priceless. <laughs> um, and lastly, we have that time in 2009 when Ryan Seacrest tried to high-five the blind guy on American Idol. <laughs> now, that's pure gold. I think the on-stage me is very dry and doesn't smile and looks kind of confused as to how I got onto stage. And the off-stage me is very, I guess, a lot happier. <laughs> I had someone come up to me after a gig and said, like, oh, that was really great. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. That's so nice of you. Uh, and then she, like, looked a bit taken aback and went, you're so much more smiley in person. So I'm going to choose to take that as a compliment, but I think there's some parts of the onstage me that I guess the actual sense of humour is pretty much exactly the same as who I am as a person, which makes sense, but... This is the statue of David by Michelangelo. Um, like, I get what he was going for, it is good. Um, <laughs> but I guess my major issue is that I don't know this David, I don't know who that is. And like I said, in art, it's important to have a face to resonate with. Uh, so I've just changed it. We could have a few options. We've got uh, David Schwimmer. Uh, we could also have Larry David, also an option. Uh, this is my friend Rachel's uncle, David. Uh, and lastly, this is American magician David Blaine. Uh, now, I've added some detailing in the abdomen area that I'd like to zoom in on, because I think it's important. So what I plan on doing with him is I just want to add a bit... He's very good, isn't he? Uh, love them all. All very, very funny. Um, Charity Work is unbelievably talented. I heard her sing for the first time last week, and it was rage inducing that's how good it was uh beck's incredible so sharp so funny um i haven't seen a lot of david and ben yet but i'm very much looking forward to it i'm sure i'll see plenty of them i don't really have any pre-show rituals i tend to just sit in a room by myself and kind of think about what i'm doing and why i'm here and then i go out and make people laugh <laughs> my post-show ritual is to sigh for 10 minutes straight and then try and figure out if that actually went well or not. And uh, sometimes I like to do a bit of observational comedy as well. So I thought a good way to translate that to you would be through some uh, easily digestible scales that I can show you, just to show off my quantitative side. 
Uh, so this first scale is called Videos I Watch to Get Off and it ranges from sexy to very sexy. <laughs> on the sexy end, we have regular porn. And on the very sexy end, we have the most beautiful moments of fair play in Wimbledon 2014. <laughs> Something about me not many people would know is that I grew up in Indonesia. I didn't grow up in Australia, so I lived in Indonesia as a kid and then moved back when I was about 16. Mm. My spirit animal is Bjork, and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I hate flyering with a passion only because I just know that I'm like upsetting someone and I'm ruining someone's day, even if it's just for a second. But I think the best way to do it is just be overly enthusiastic about it. So I guess last year there was a lot of like leaping into people's walking path. And even if they say no to you, at least like they don't feel like they've made you sad by saying no. So I guess it's all just about empathy. <laughs> My comedy career goal is to keep enjoying being on stage and never hate it. I think the minute I stop enjoying being on stage, I'll stop doing comedy. The Comedy Zone is on every night except Wednesday nights at Trades Hall, 8.30s on weekdays and 7.30s on Sundays. And I will be there.